We left off the last video with the Fibonacci sequence. Now that you've had time to think about it, let's extend it. The next number in the sequence is 13, and the number after that is 21, and so on. To find the next number in the Fibonacci sequence, you add the previous two numbers. So, if you were to describe the Fibonacci sequence to someone, you would say, well, it starts with two ones, then you add two consecutive numbers in the sequence to obtain the next number in the sequence. Now, did you notice the state of mind you were in when you were looking for the pattern and trying to decide what number came next? When you came out of that state of mind, did you feel good if you found the number or frustrated if you didn't? Remember, those emotions we put on this are things we do. The mathematics itself is a pleasant experience. So you may be asking yourself, what's the big deal with the Fibonacci sequence? Who cares? Well, it turns out that the Fibonacci sequence is connected to all kinds of other mathematical items and many of the things that we see in the world around us. Here's my favorite application of the Fibonacci sequence. I want to show you the family tree of a male honeybee. A male honeybee has one parent, its mother, because it comes from an unfertilized egg. So if I start to draw in the family tree, that male honeybee has one parent, its mother. But that female has two parents, a mother and a father, because it comes from a fertilized egg. So that female has a mother and a father. Now that male honeybee comes from an unfertilized egg, so it only has a mother. But that female has two parents, a mother and a father. Now we do the same thing. That female, two parents, female and male. That male, one parent, female. And that female, two parents, a female and a male. Now let's count the number of bees in each generation of the family tree of this male honeybee. In the first generation, we have one bee. Second generation, one bee. Third generation, two bees. This generation, three bees. This generation, five bees. And you can see that the number of bees in the family tree of a male honeybee follows the Fibonacci sequence exactly. So if I use my inductive reasoning, I can predict that the next generation in this family tree will have eight bees. And is that true? That female has two parents, one parent, two parents, two parents, one parent. Two plus one is three, plus two is five, plus two is seven, plus one is eight. So yes, that generation will have exactly eight bees. So we see that the Fibonacci sequence, which is mathematics, shows us a pattern in the family tree of a male honeybee, something that we see in the real world and then also allows us to say something about what's going to happen next. So it organizes something in the real world and allows us to make predictions about what comes next. This is one of my favorite applications of the Fibonacci sequence. So now we see that the mathematics can be used to describe and make predictions about the world around us. If there are hidden connections between items in mathematics, and mathematics describes the world around us, then maybe there are hidden connections in the world around us as well. It's something to think about. The numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are called Fibonacci numbers. Here's the definition from the online dictionary. Can you see the Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci numbers in the keys on a piano? The number of seeds in each spiral of seeds in a sunflower is always a Fibonacci number. Here's an article a friend of mine sent to me about how changes in the stock market are modeled with Fibonacci numbers. It turns out that many things in the world around us, both man-made and natural, organize themselves according to the Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci numbers. You're going to see the Fibonacci sequence in other topics we cover, so stay tuned for that. But before we leave, I want to ask you a couple of questions. I don't expect answers to them. I just want you to think about these questions as we progress through the videos in this series. The first question is this. Is there any gender, race, or religion associated with the Fibonacci sequence? Does the sequence change in any way depending on who's looking at it? Here's my second question. How long has the Fibonacci sequence been around? We are conscious of it right now, but how long has it been in existence? Before Fibonacci himself? Before the stock market, honeybees, or sunflowers? Just something to think about.
In the next video, we're going to look at this book, The Book of Squares, written by Fibonacci around the year 1220. I think you'll be surprised by the first paragraph in the introduction to this book, so stay tuned for that video.